everyone welcome back to another video of common diseases in humans in the previous session we studied about pathogens common diseases such as typhoid pneumonia common cold and malaria so in this session we will study about rest of the common diseases and their preventive measures so let us begin with the topic now the next type of common disease is amoebiasis or also known as amoebic dysentery which is caused by enta amoeba histolytica which is a protozoa it is a small protozoan which causes this disease known as amoebiasis or amoebic dysentery now coming to its mode of transmission it is the parasite which is found in the large intestine and the transmission of its disease is because of the house flies that act as a mechanical carrier of this disease or of this parasite now these house flies only transmit this parasite from the feces of an infected person to the food and food products on where they sit so yes the consumption of these contaminated food and water by the fecal matter only are the main source of this disease now coming to its symptoms its symptoms generally seen as constipation abdominal pain cramps stools with excess mucus and blood clots now another important point i want to add in this video is that when learning about various types of common diseases important points to look for is the causative agent of that disease for example in case of amoebiasis it is enta amoeba histolytica and another point is whether it is a bacteria virus protozoan or a helminth so in this case for example enta amoeba histolytica is a protozoan now how these parasites are transmitted is another point that is their mode of transmission and lastly the symptoms which are caused by them moving on to the next type of common disease that is scariasis which is caused by a type of helminth known as scaris so it is a type of a helminth scaris that causes this disease scariasis now coming to its mode of transmission the mode of transmission of this parasite is through the eggs that are excreted along with the feces of an infected person which contaminate soil water and plants now when a healthy person consume this contaminated water vegetable or fruits etc so that healthy person then acquires this disease now talking about its symptoms its symptoms include internal bleeding muscular pain fever anemia and blockage of intestinal passage now let us study about another kind of common disease which is known as elephantiasis or filariasis so it is caused by another kind of helminth known as bucheria the filarial worm so yes it is another kind of helminth that causes this disease now coming to its mode of transmission it is basically transmitted to a healthy person through the bite by the infected female mosquito vectors now if you look at its symptoms the slowly developing chronic inflammation of the organs is the main symptom of this disease basically the lymphatic vessels of the lower limbs are affected as you can see in this image which leads to the various kind of deformities and in some cases genital organs are also affected in humans now the next type of common disease are the ringworms which is caused by many fungi belonging to genera trichophyton microsporum and epidermophyton so basically ringworms are caused due to many fungi now talking about its mode of transmission this disease is generally acquired by using towels clothes and comb of an infected person yes and heat and moisture help these fungi to thrive in the skin folds such as groin areas and between the toes now its symptoms generally include dry and scaly lesions on various parts of the body and intense itching now comes another very important topic under the common diseases which are its preventive measures so when it comes to control of these infectious diseases maintenance of personal and public hygiene is very important 
So, practicing personal hygiene includes keeping the body clean and consumption of clean drinking water, food, vegetables, fruits, etc. You can also note down these important points simultaneously in your notebooks as well. Now, practicing public hygiene includes proper disposal of waste and excreta and periodic cleaning of this periodic cleaning and disinfection of water reservoirs, pools, tanks, etc. So, practicing personal and public hygiene can help preventing diseases like typhoid, amoebiasis and ascariasis. Now, in case of airborne diseases such as pneumonia and common cold, apart from practicing previously discussed preventive measures, close contact with the infected person and their belongings should be avoided. So now for the diseases that are transmitted through insect vectors, the important measure is to control or eliminate the vectors and their breeding places. So this can be done by avoiding stagnation of water in and around the residential areas and regular cleaning of household coolers, introducing fishes like gambusia in ponds, fishes, Gambusia in ponds because they feed on the mosquito larvae. Spraying of insecticides in ditches, drainage areas, and swamps, etc. Windows and doors should be provided with wire mesh, which prevents the mosquito from coming inside the house, and use of mosquito nets. Now, such precautions are very helpful in preventing diseases like malaria, dengue and chikungunya. Advancements in biological science have helped us to effectively deal with many infectious diseases. One such weapon is the use of vaccines and immunization programs, which has enabled us to completely eradicate a deadly disease like smallpox. A large number of other infectious diseases like polio, diphtheria, pneumonia and tetanus have been controlled on a large extent as well. Whereas, biotechnology is providing us with newer and safer vaccines as well. Now, discovery of antibiotics and drugs has also enabled us to fight various infectious diseases. So yes, this was all about common diseases in humans. Hope you understood the topic and you will also try incorporating the various preventive measures that we learned in this topic. Also, stay tuned for more informative videos. Thank you.